Okay, well, while we're on this tip of, uh, no pun intended there, but while we're on this tip of adding rhythm to things that are otherwise sustained and maybe don't have a lot of movement, uh, I'm going to use this same session here with these drums and this same pad sound to add rhythm, add movement to the pad sound, but in a slightly different way. And to do that, we're going to use Ableton Live's gate effect, which again is one of the audio effects we can find under the audio effects category. Now, I don't have time to go into a full-on description of what exactly a gate is, but if you're not super familiar with it, the basics are that you have these two thresholds. When an incoming volume signal goes above this top threshold, which is just called the threshold in this gate, we can hear it or it, it becomes audible. When the signal falls below this return threshold, it drops the volume down by a whole lot. Now, the amount it drops it down by is set by this floor setting here. So at negative 40, that means that anything, any signal that drops low enough to go below this bottom threshold here is gonna be turned down by negative 40 dB. So it's gonna drop it a whole lot. I'm actually gonna turn this all the way down to negative infinity so that anything going below this return threshold is just gonna silence itself completely. Now I put it directly on the pad sound and if we play it back, you can kind of see, let me solo it here. What it's doing is it's um, kind of reacting to the subtle modulation I've got going on here from this auto pan. Maybe we'll turn that one off. So now we have a more sustained sound. You can see that there's a little bit of volume difference going on, but overall the volume averages out around the same place. There's a couple little peaks there when notes start, but nothing really that distinct. If I move the threshold up and the return threshold, you can see kind of moves along with it. If I move it up high enough, so it's at a point above where all the volume from this pad signal is, we don't hear the pad at all. So it's only at a point where the threshold and the return threshold are kind of touching the peaks that we start to hear it. If it's down low enough, we're kind of like bypassing the gate effect and we're just always hearing the pad sound, right? So on a pad sound, this isn't really gonna be the most effective thing here because the pad kind of holds out at a similar level. We don't have a lot of very distinct dynamic differences here. However, if we open the side panel of the gate here, just like with the compressor, if you've ever used that before, we have a little side chain button. And if I click that, I can take audio signal from one of my other tracks. Let's take it from this main drums track up here, which uh, real quick, I'll just show you, as you can see, we've got a drum rack here with just a kick, a clap, a couple of hi-hats. So we're gonna take the signal from that track. So I'm gonna select here where it says audio from, and this is where naming your tracks can be really helpful because I could just find it, bam, main drums right there. I'm not digging through for MIDI 27 or audio 48 or whatever. So um, now that we've got the signal coming in from the main drums, what this means is that the gate is no longer looking at the input signal from the pad, it's looking at the input signal from the drums. Now, because the drums have a lot of peaky moments, we've got a lot of dynamic difference between quiet bits and loud bits. If you don't believe me, I'll just solo it for a minute. And you can now see I have the drums soloed, but on the pad track, we can see the gate is kind of analyzing the volume of the drum signal. Let's bring the pad back in so we'll unsolo things. So you can see when the drums now go over the threshold, we hear the pad. When the drums volume goes below the return threshold, it cuts the pad out. Now it's pretty dominated by the kick right now because the kick happens to be right now the loudest thing in my drum mix. So pretty much when we hear the, um, you know, the kick hits, we hear the pad hit along with it. But what I wanna do is have it pay more attention to this other stuff, this clap, the open hi-hat and the closed hi-hat. So what I'm gonna do just for a minute is mute the kick and just solo this, just so you can hear what we're gonna use as the source material. So we basically have this kind of interchanging hi-hats with this clap. Now, if I play it all together, I wanna leave the kick in the mix of everything, so I don't wanna just leave the kick muted here. So what we're gonna do is go back to the pad track, we're gonna look at the gate, and what we're gonna do is next to the side chain, we're gonna turn on this EQ switch. Now what this allows me to do is cut certain frequencies out of the input signal. So what I'm gonna do is use this high pass filter setting and let's, we'll play around with this cutoff, this frequency setting. We're basically just gonna cut the kick out of the input signal so we're just, or the input signal is just kind of listening to the hats and the clap sound. 
So you can see now we're gonna have to make an adjustment to the threshold because really the only thing that goes over is one clap. As we bring the threshold down, we start to introduce the hi-hats. Let's maybe adjust the threshold a little bit here, or the frequency, I should say. There we go, we're starting to find this sweet spot where the claps and the hi-hats are rising above the threshold and then falling below the return threshold. So we get this groovy movement happening on the pad sound. Now something that I find as kind of a bonus tip here, something I find fun to play around with or maybe automate is this hold control. That means that when the signal goes above that threshold, it's gonna hold it out for a certain amount of time. You can go up to 1.5 seconds before it uh, kind of pays attention to it again and says, oh wait, it fell below the return threshold. Let me turn it down for you. So it's basically just gonna hold the sound out for a longer period of time or a shorter period of time as it goes above that main threshold. So let's kind of play around with that. I'm gonna undo a couple of steps here just to take it back to the point where it was. I think it defaults to 10 milliseconds. So if we keep it short, we get this very kind of tight, snappy, bouncy version of the pad. So you could maybe map this to a macro or to a MIDI controller and then just record in some automation of that to get even more dynamic movement out of your pad sound. So again, another way to add movement to what would otherwise be a relatively static or dynamically even sound by using the gate with the sidechain mode. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.